Hello, my absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grayson. In this video, I want to cover a tale of three moons that we have going on while we are in the visiting of cancer season. We've got two full moons that have happened and then this gorgeous new moon that's nestled in the middle. And they are all telling a really important story about not only how we're relating and nurturing ourselves at this point in our lives, especially emotionally, but it's also telling the story for each of us of something that we are trying to bring to life. We're trying to bring it into material form in the touchable, tangible world, right? There's a drive or an ambition. And we're finding that there are emotional conditions. There are emotional inner states or beliefs that have actually been standing in the way of us bringing this to flourishing. So we've got this gorgeous conversation that is very concentrated in terms of the astrology that has got our attention during this cancer season for us to be able to really make some progress, illuminate the things that need to get out of the way, and ultimately land on the other side with a lot more clarity, a lot more understanding not only about who we are in terms of perseverance, but emotionally what we need in order to do, be, have, and sustain what we're trying to birth into a very physical state. So if you are looking to find out what both full moons in Capricorn, both in June and July have had to offer, but where it also fits in with the new moon that's coming up in July in Cancer, then this is the video for you. Now, I want to let you know in the description box down below, you can click the link and I've got little breakdowns of how this is playing out for all 12 houses in your chart. So you're going to want to make sure you identify where these moons are happening in your particular chart. And if you're not sure how to do that, I've got a video that I will pop up at the end to show you how to find these active transit charts in your particular chart or active transits in your particular chart. Okay. All right, beautiful friends, before we jump in, yes, we've still got the Astro packages that are on sale until July 22nd. Click in the description box down below if you're ready to pull in, tuck in, do some more one-on-one -on -one work. That's really the best way to do it. And I am hoping that you guys are absolutely out there loving the Venus Reset Program. Thank you so much as well for the those of you who've sent me the emails, the review of the program, who've shared your experience. You're like, I got to day five and I I really had an unfolding or at day 19, this happened for me. Thank you so much for sharing. For the rest of you, if you have not taken on the Venus Reset program to look at how you are attracting things to you, your relationship with your Venus, how do you receive? How do you let someone love and nurture you? How do you let money flow to you where you are not hustling for it? The Venus Reset program is something you definitely want to check out and it's in the description box down below. All right, beautiful friends, let's get in here, pull up some beautiful charts and have a talk about this brilliant message that's unfolding. I'm going through a moment in astrology right now, and, and I hope that you guys are having obviously your own experience with it, but I am really in love with what the energies are offering us because this is such a concentrated story. First of all, the sun plays a huge role in the entire story because the sun is in its transit through cancer as we're having this Capricorn Cancer um, conversation, which these are the same axes, home, family, material, emotional. But as the sun is running through this crabby Cancerian energy, what we have is an opportunity to, first of all, be motivated to not only watch and understand and to know ourselves emotionally, but to also look at where our own conditioning has come from. And I'm talking the conditioning that goes back to your roots. It goes beyond childhood, right? It goes back into your ancestral lineage. Why and how have you been conditioned the way that you've been conditioned? Now, something else I was thinking about as I was looking over this um, forecast for you guys is that, you know, down to a cellular level, I really think we have an opportunity to get into the realm of, you know, are you actually more prone to a particular disposition emotionally? And it comes in your cells, in your DNA, in your hard wiring. Like the things in you that are the most vulnerable, they're fragile, they're your ushy gushy parts, right? Where do they come from? Not only in your at-home conditioning, but well into 
your DNA ancestral storylines. Whatever it is, the sun is bringing us light, heat, life, and motivation during cancer, cancer season to get to know these things, to get to know our own water. And it's this other place where I feel like there's a fair amount of vulnerability that comes with cancer that is about, you know, if I do not know deeply and emotionally who I am, why I'm being motivated to do something, why I'm in a pattern that I've already seen in my life, without this piece of knowledge for ourselves, this deep wisdom, getting out of that pattern is impossible. We are bound to pull in exactly what we've had over and over and over again. But the gorgeous thing I think about this particular Cancerian season is that something doesn't sit or something doesn't feel right. So it's like, no, wait, I have been here There is something here. Maybe I don't fully understand exactly what it is just yet, but something's not right. And so around that sun energy that during cancer season is really lighting us up and motivating us to get into what we need to know emotionally, how we need to nurture ourselves, how we need to nurture other people, how we were nurtured, and thus it has formed something in us. That sun motivation is allowing us to welcome in new information. Now that emotional content and wisdom that comes from knowing thine self in that way plays a massive part in how these Capricorn energies are unfolding. So let's talk first about this full moon that occurred on June 21st of 2024, okay? So this was a full moon that was happening at one degree of Capricorn, okay? So you can see here on the chart what the the astrology looked like. And the first thing I want to say is remember that while this was unfolding, this full moon has its own lunar family as well. So where you started to need to pivot, you're trying to bring something into the material plane, you have an ambition, you want to make a long range plan or a goal for yourself, there's something you want to bring into a new reality, even if it's a familial pattern, right? This actually started for you in December of 2022. That's when we had the new moon at one degree of Capricorn in the exact place. So what was happening for you at that time, go back to your journals, go back to your Google calendar. What were you starting? You were planting seeds of intention and you were like, okay, listen, I, I, I want this in my life. I want a different financial picture. I want to make sure I have life insurance in case something happens to me. I want to be married. I What did you hand our sea slash mountain goat to help you bring into a touchable, tangible, material legacy energy for yourself? Now, from that particular position, when we got to September of 2023, you would have been in action. This was the first quarter moon that was happening, and this was at 29 degrees of Sagittarius. So just right there in that Capricorn story, right? Even though it was like those last degrees of Sag, right? So what was happening here, though, is you were in action, 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 action. You're tearing down something building something else in there. People, places, things, old ideas are falling out of your life sometimes very quickly and you are headed towards the future and you're ready. You're trusting that instinct and moving, okay? So now we get to um, June 22nd, 21st, depending on where you are in the world, and we've got this full moon back at one degree of Capricorn and it's time to pivot. You need to end something, acknowledge something or adjust something and the full moon is pulling out all of the light in the sky. It's turning on all the lights. It's like, look around this room, girl. Um, (laughs) You can see what needs to be changed, right? And it's opening you emotionally as well. Now, this particular moon though that happened just here in June was also in a square to Neptune. So, One of the things we became open to is the fact that I'm trying to to pivot and birth this thing into its next orientation in the material world, but there's something in the way. And the something, it's emotional. This is emotional. And this is coming back to emotional patterning that 
as this square to Neptune is presenting itself, it's showing you that there is a level of deception, whether it is self-deception because you're keeping the story going or you've told yourself something. Great examples of this are like, yeah, I need to be building this new business, but I can't do it. I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy. I'm not valuable enough. I'm not smart enough, right? The imposter syndrome and all of these other things that come up. But there's also an element here of others' deception, right? Where someone else has deceived us with information. So this is a time where I think at an emotional level, we're going to also dig into those patterns of what were you taught about money? What were you taught about money? What were you told? What were you shown? And this played into your emotional patterning and belief systems. And we're going to be covering that. What were you told about, you know, having a relationship? What were you told about food and how you relate to it? What were you told about your beauty? What were you told about? Were you told that you're only valuable if you're doing and providing and being something, right? Like there's no value to your human being. There's only value to your human doing and achieving. What are the emotional patterns? That's what this moon is really bringing this attention to, especially with that conversation with Neptune and running you right into this space that says, no, 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 listen, you are missing something here. So yes, this is a seeding point of where we're going to pivot, but you're not going to be able to bring this to a successful culmination until we get this emotional piece worked out. Now, at this full moon, what you can also see here is that there is a semi-sextile between the moon and Pluto, and I really think that that is the saving grace of this particular lunation because, first of all, it reminds you that you have grit. You have some grit. You have it in you to endure, to look at what's really going on, not beat yourself up, celebrate your victories, but to withstand looking at what you need to go deeper into your emotional being and saying, oh, gosh, you know, this is the conditioning that came from my childhood that I didn't even realize this was an emotional hang up for me, or I didn't realize this was a fantasy, right? It's like this place where it's like, well, I really want to have a successful partnership in my life, but I'm doing things and I'm bringing people into my life that could never actually have that. Where does that come from for me? Where is that wound, right? I really want to have a different financial situation in my life, very Capricornian, right? But I don't actually know how to make money. I don't actually have a wealth cycle, a wealth investing cycle. I don't know anything about it. I just want to have it. So it really like lights up this space though where you're getting this information about patterning, but you're like, well, now hold on. That sucks. <laughs> I don't love that. I don't love seeing that, but I've got it in me to learn. I can learn. I can go a new direction. I can be taught and I can endure in order to bring that to um, a reality, right? To bring that into a tangible reality for myself. So this is a beautiful place where we're gonna find ourselves coming to this new moon that's gonna be happening on July 5th in Cancer at 14 degrees. Now this is delicious because here you come not necessarily loving what you saw. The thing is not tangibly come to reality, but at this new moon, you're like, I'm willing, I'm ready. The sun again, playing a huge role, being in conjunction with the luminary. So this starts its own next story. This is your fresh start, okay? When the sun and the moon are together, anything's possible, but it's starting a lunar story for you. And this particular lunation, not only just being a new moon in Cancer, giving you the opportunity to plant your seeds of intention to say, you know, over the next six, nine months, I am really willing to understand my emotional patterning. I am really willing to understand myself deeply, emotionally, realize that emotional content and emotional capacity will be what leads me to be successful in what I want to have in my life materially and that there is no intellectual way around it. This is going in and down. So these are awesome opportunities at this new moon to go, I need to mature in my capacity for emotional 
holding or my emotional knowledge, my self knowledge emotionally. These are great things. Now at this moon, the thing that I really want to celebrate, there are a lot of aspects that are alive at this new moon, but one I think is particularly important and exact is that we can see that this, um, this particular lunation, this new moon, is in a direct opposition to Ceres over here in Capricorn, okay? So this new moon, where we're planting the seeds of intention to say, I'm willing to start cancer, cardinal energy, to know myself emotionally, my emotional resources, my emotional handicaps, um, but the opposition is about how you nurture, how you nurture, right? Like, where am I opposed in my nurturing? I don't feel like I have support. I am not supported in knowing myself emotionally enough to bring this to a resource. And it's interesting because I think whatever you're working on and you're trying to birth into the material plane is going to that series is going to irritate your story enough to keep you motivated, right? Because it's like, well, this is absolutely like, I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to change that. I don't know how to understand that more deeply. I don't, I'm mad at the government. You know, this is still Capricorn. I'm mad at my parents. I'm mad that this hasn't worked out. There are these stories of authority that are not nurturing you anymore. So you're having to uncover, discover, discard them. And it's, we've got to come to the other side because that series in Capricorn energy is holding an old story for you of where you get your emotional nourishing right? This can't be, you can't breastfeed from an old story and get nourished anymore. It's done, right? So this opposition, I think, is lighting up your opportunity to plant your seeds of intention here at this new moon to unfold a new emotional story. Now, in the lunation family, and you'll see it on the screen here, the start is here. This is the new moon. You're working on it. You're bringing this clarity. You're getting the emotional clutter out of the way, but it's but a beginning, right? Now, when we get to April 5th of 2025, this is where not only will you have brought something likely into the material form, but your real deeper understanding and the next level of building this thing, I think kicks off right then April 5th, 2025, because we're going to see the, the first quarter moon come to 15 degrees of cancer and you're building, you're building and you are in action with this thing. So the way that I envision this for us is I'm trying to build this thing over here, very Capricorn, right? I can't do it. What's the problem? I'm not clear on it. The new moon comes and it's like, whoa, I've had this emotional emotional patterning, this story, this old authority that I've been like getting power out of that story and it's not working anymore. It's not nourishing me. So, okay, I'm willing to shift and pivot and find a way to learn to undo that, get deeper, hold more emotional capacity. Also, this emotional story, now that I can understand it and see it a little bit more, break free from the, tra the chains of it, when I'm going to get so the full moon coming up in July at the second full moon coming up at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Now I see how I can build with it. And I'm going to be taking this to the next level by the time we get to April. The spring is going to see an entirely different version of you. Now your new moon story for this Cancerian energy is going to end in October of 2026. That's when you're going to bring this whole cycle that you've been working on to a really brilliant and beautiful close. And you will likely have learned a massive amount about what it means to emotionally challenge an old story because the old stories really have been giving us power, but they've also been keeping you stuck, right? They're keeping us stuck. I can't grow from that. You know, I can't pray to have love in my life and have a successful relationship while I'm, you know, I can't pray for my own partner if I'm dating someone else's. I can't keep going back to a partner that can't put it together with me. And I, I have to look at what is the wound that I'm working with that keeps driving me back to them. I can't have a different money mastery if I wasn't raised with an idea of financial savvy. So it's these stories that are going to be moved out of the way. Okay. So then we bring ourselves to 
the tail of the third moon, right, which is this full moon happening at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And this is July 21st. And I love it because this moon, as you can see on the screen, has got a little bit better aspecting for us to be able to work with. Now, first and foremost, from that moon, that full moon in June to this one, that was at one degree of Capricorn. This is at 29. We have put some pieces together. We have a much better understanding of the ambition, how to achieve the ambition, and the clarity of what was in the way, kind of blocking the way to be successful. The theoretic degree here is powerful. The other thing that 29 degrees calls for is to behave with such integrity. Move above board, right? Like, <laughs> don't give the universe an opportunity to make you an example of bad behavior. <laughs> okay, right? We're learning enough at this point, but that 29 degrees is a conversation of really doing things in a way that is you're making the next right move. You're building a bridge that's going to go somewhere and you're building that bridge specifically because you want it to take you here. It's sane, it's rational, it's above board, lots of integrity. Now, the other thing we have to bring in here is that this particular moon is also in a trine now to Neptune. Now, we saw that there was a conversation at the previous full moon where we had a square to Neptune. So it was telling you, you're not seeing something here. This is a piece of deception. This has to get sorted out. But now at 29 degrees, this is a conversation of ease between the elders of your chart, right? Like this is two elders, two wise portions of your chart coming together going, ah, Okay, intuitively and emotionally, we're tapped in. So you can trust what your intuition is telling you. You can trust that by having identified some emotional things or cleared out some baggage energetically that's been sitting there, that you can trust what is going on. You can trust the vision that's being brought to you. You can trust teachers that you're bringing into your life to act as a resource to help you change. You can use your intuition. You can trust your guides. This is a phenomenal aspect of not deception, but instead trusting that intuition, the small voice that's also showing you. You know, it's showing you at this particular full moon because we still have a pivot that it's like, it's okay for you to shed that. That's not you anymore. That is not needed. That is a story that you carried for 30 years it's okay. You've done the very best you can. And now we can put it down. You have finished or you can complete that karmic, karmic baggage that you were carrying, right? And now we can put that down. It's okay to go to therapy. Maybe somewhere in your conditioning, you were told it's not okay to seek help and talk about what was going on in your life. Now, there's another aspect that we absolutely cannot miss out on this. And if you look at this moon, it is conjunct to Pluto, who is retrograde here. Now that Pluto is going to be making its way back into Aquarius. It's not there just yet or into um, Capricorn. It's not there just yet. So we get a little break. But this Pluto, we saw that there was also a conversation at the full moon. It was that semi sextile that was like, okay, yeah, listen, you can do things. You've got grit. You've got a little chutzpah to be able to make it through. But now this moon comes conjunct to this Plutonian energy, this is the other piece of the wisdom that says, I have to emotionally die off. I have to let the story go and I can go deep. I can go deep here. I can really take a risk of getting down into causes and conditions. And this is what I want to give a very specific example. You know, let's take the example of being married. And you're treating your partner a particular way, or you've had a story about your partner for a very long time, right? Maybe something happened in the past, maybe whatever. And you are finding out as this moon and Pluto are together that you're like, even in my subconscious, there's been a tremendous amount of story keeping. And that has colored every decision that I have made in my marriage and my relationship around my money. That has been my level of my own emotional manipulation. I have used the story of something my father did to take my husband hostage. And that's me being the emotional manipulator, right? And so it's like there's a priority sense here with the Pluto being in conjunction to this moon that it's like it is not only necessary for me to die off so that I can rise differently in my intimate, financial, personal, professional relationships, but I can't go further 
And I can't make this pivot without doing that. That's why I also think that this 29 degree conversation between the elders is so important because it's showing you that it's okay to shed what was. It's okay to give forgiveness that you've been denying. It's okay for the veil of of blinders that have maybe been on for you to be lifted and for you to go, oh my gosh, I have been having a 20-year emotional reaction to something I didn't believe that was there. Maybe you've been having a six-month emotional reaction and, you know, it's been a bit more Plutonian. You, It's painful. You feel your mood is dark and grumpy about it. You know, resentment comes up. You know, these things. And now you're like, I don't have to be fearful. I don't have to live in paranoia. I don't have to live in all of these other things. It's okay for me to shed them and to move forward with a different story. And I think that that is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly impactful. Now, if you can see here, we've also got just a little bit of a separation, a smaller orb um, trying to Uranus that's happening in Taurus here. And I think that this is just another aspect that helps to continue to say, it's okay for me to break away from this because... You know, Uranus and Taurus woke up a sleeping mountain. So the values, the way we valued ourselves, where your self-worth comes from, it's all been shaken, not stirred. So it's been rising to the surface of what has been ground down into you living underneath that mountain that are old values or belief systems that are not actually worthy of you anymore because they don't serve you. But also where are new talents and skills and ideas and earning potentials and worth and relationship potentials that are available to you now. And now you can have the courage to bring them into existence. Now we've still got series also a part of the story, continuing the story of nourishment, how we nourish ourselves. And I think that this just speaks to, again, to this pattern that we've been seeing that we've got to get this emotional old story, the old baggage piece out of the way, because we can't exact extract nourishment from that anymore. But now what we can do is have the courage to step into building resources that allow us to have bridges to new nourishment and bring things into our material reality. I'm really pumped, you guys, about what these moons have to offer to us. Now, it's easy to listen to the forecast and kind of pick out what's going on around us. The hard work is for us when we are off YouTube together and we're boots on the ground in our own lives, right? And we've got to actually practice being with our partners and not living in the emotional manipulation or not accepting the emotional manipulation. It is being with our finances wherever they currently are and realizing maybe there's a gap between where we want to be and where we are. It's being with our parents. It's being with the uh, it's being with what are old stories that are not nourishing us anymore and then taking the practice to build the skill bringing in the professionals the resources that show us how to bridge these gaps of nourishment between all a failure to thrive and living our best lives you know what I mean so I'm sending you all a bunch of love if you would like a one-on-one session let's do it I don't know what else to say let's do it because listening to the general is great. But when we get into your story and we start moving and walking, this is where your big emotional changes come from. This is where they come from. All right, my absolutely beautiful friends. I love you a ton and I look forward to seeing you in your next video. So make sure you check out a couple of them that are at the end of this video right now, especially if you don't know how to identify which houses these are happening in for you in your chart. Bye friends.